here with the fabulous, the hunky Reynolds Engelhart, uh, the former Magnolia Crawford. How are you, honey? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Tell me a little bit about what's been going on since uh, your season ended. After uh, drag, my season ended, I went back to my private life, went back to my career, and I grew a beard. <laughs> yeah, I see that. You weren't performing anywhere at Magnolia after the season ended? Well, I did perform a little as Magnolia, um, but drag or Magnolia rather is a hobby. After the season, it stopped being fun, so I stopped doing her. Was your experience a positive one, or did you walk away thinking this this is this was not what I signed up for? <laughs> well, I guess when I went into it, I knew that anything could happen. Uh, I guess all is fair in love and drag bag. I was aware that I could be turned into a raging bitch. I just didn't think it would happen. <laughs> I knew it could happen. I just hoped it would. I had a lot, some major reservations doing the show because I don't consider myself, nor have I really ever considered myself to be a drag queen. Doing the show was a little bit out of my comfort zone. And I think that part of the reason I flopped so, so incredibly strongly, why it was such a disaster. I think I attempted to shove Magnolia into a drag queen box and she's not, she's not a drag queen. I think if I had managed to go past that first episode, I would have figured out what I was doing more, and I think, I hope, I could have got the judges and the audience to appreciate what I do. If I were to do it over again, I would absolutely make no efforts to fit into a drag box and just 100% strictly stick with the character. The reason we're talking is because you had a bombshell that you dropped that, um, that Magnolia, is, you, are, you are killing her off. <laughs> well, I... I'm not, I'm definitely not killing her off. I'm there, there's not going to be a big murder on stage or a, a whodunit. Yeah, no, no, she's still around and she's still um, a part of my life. She's just not an important part of my life right now. Uh, I would definitely say in no way am I retired from performing as Magnolia or making more videos as Magnolia. I'm just on an extended hiatus. I don't know how long that hiatus will be though. I still love creating characters. That's something that I really love and it's something I've done my whole life. Uh, and I thought if I'm not going to be performing or making videos as Magnolia, I still want to do them. So I thought about bringing up this other character who's one of Magnolia's <coughs> ex-husbands. His name is John Bennett Ramsey. Okay. And, uh, she married him when she left Winnetka, Illinois, <laughs> and moved to Las Vegas. John Bennett Ramsey uh, was a car salesman. He owned Pontiac and Saturn dealerships. And, uh, well, as you know, GM stopped selling those the same year. And he lost everything, and that's when Magnolia divorced him. He's an extremely religious man, and Magnolia is not at all religious. Magnolia follows fad religions, whatever the fad religion is at the moment, but John Bennett Ramsey's a born again. And I thought it'd be fun to make a, a series called John Bennett Ramsey's Heavenly Thoughts to Inspire. <laughs> the only thing that matters to me in all of this is that I, I find it entertaining and everything I've ever done as Magnolia has made me laugh. Hopefully I find John Bennett Ramsey to be every bit as entertaining. I think his name is funny. Will John have a little nose? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely a lot less makeup will go into his face. Back to Magnolia for a second. Where did she? Where did she come from? And where? What inspired her? She was born and raised in Winnetka, Illinois. Um, her parents, whose names are Leslie and Terry Crawford, made their money through network marketing. And um, she's an only child, and she was raised raised to be delusional. She competed in pageants her whole life. She won. Her very first pageant she competed in as a toddler, and, and she won, at least she thinks she won every pageant since then, even though she never actually placed. Her parents would buy her a crown and a 
trophy and tell her she won. So uh. she doesn't know she was on a reality show. She thinks she was on the Miss RuPaul drag show pageant. So uh. she has no clue. And she, she won it, too. And she thinks she, she won. won, yeah. And I spent a long time developing who she is as a person. I find it absolutely hysterical. And I do wish that that I was able to show people that because after the show, I got so much hate mail that Magnolia stops being fun and that the only reason I, I do her is for fun. Right. You know, I don't need her for money. I don't do it for a living. I do it for fun and when it stopped being fun, that's why I stopped. I try not to be negative and I really don't feel negative about any of the experience besides the fact that it just kind of burnt me out and I have that, you know, I've taken a step back, but overall it's been it's been fun. It's all part of the autobiography, right? I mean, it's all just an experience. When you're on your deathbed, you can look back on all the things you've done, and this was a part of it. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and um, let's hope to God that this recorded. <laughs>